Hi everybody, Jeremy Siskin here. I'm very excited to be able to say that I'm the author of Playing Solo Jazz Piano and my new book, Jazz Piano Fundamentals, which is available now at my site and at Amazon. Um, and today I actually want to cover something that I do talk about uh, towards the end of this book, Jazz Fundamentals, which is the tritone substitution. And knowing the tritone substitution helps to explain a lot that's going on on jazz lead sheets. Um, and it will, when you see a mysterious chord, oftentimes the reason that is there has to do with the tritone substitution. So um, this lecture, video, whatever, is gonna be essentially divided into two parts. What is the tritone substitution and why does it work theoretically on the first uh, part? And then secondly, how are you actually going to use it? What can you do with in this information in the second part? So um, let's do it. So. Um, excuse all of my notes here, um, but hey, I'm a college professor, I'm an academic. So um, here's the rule of the tritone substitution stated clearly. You must, you may, <laughs> not you must, you may always swap out a dominant chord for another dominant chord, a tritone away. And I guess we should define this word tritone. A tritone is the interval right in the center of an octave. So if you ever have trouble, sorry, my camera's weird, bugging me. If you ever have trouble finding a tritone, start on the outer notes of an octave. I'll show you here. So I'm starting on two Gs, and then I'm going to just go in my half steps. And you should end up on the very same note with both of your hands. So here I'm on a D flat. It's the exact middle point of an octave. Um, so it's either, we could say, an augmented fourth, or diminished fifth. Um, we're fond of telling students uh, in music theory class that this interval was associated with the devil in early music, so it was actually forbidden in early music. Um, and so um, you don't hear it a lot in early music, and it is a highly dissonant interval. Uh, it reminds some people of ambulance sirens, right? Um, or the beginning of Maria, right? tone quite a bit. Uh, composers like Thelonious Monk love the tritone. Um, and, you know, it took me until like a couple of years ago to figure out why we call it the tritone. Um, a tone, in kind of the British English way of speaking, is like a whole step. So the tritone is basically three whole steps. One, two, from the note. So that's why it's called a tritone. Tri being three, tone being whole steps. Okay, so what this means is that we can swap out, when we see a G7, we can swap it out for a D flat seven. When we see a C7, we can swap it out for a G flat seven. When we see an F7, we can swap it out for a B7. And of course, by, vice versa. For some reason, I chose some of the easiest chords, swapping them out for harder chords, but it can work the other way too, um, of course. And at first glance, this is very unintuitive. Um, because these chords, like these are not in related keys, right? These are not close in the circle of fifths. They have vastly different key signatures. They're basically as far apart in the circle of fifths as you can get. So why does this work? I have four, I think, reasons for you. It's really three reasons and then kind of an addendum. So the first and the biggest reason is that these chords have enharmonically equivalent thirds and sevenths. So for a G7, for instance, the F natural would be the seventh, and then the B natural is the third. And for its tritone sub, which is D flat seven or C sharp seven, um, in fact, I spelled everything as C sharp seven, stupidly. Um, bad theory professor, bad. C sharp seven. Uh, the third would be E sharp, which is enharmonically equivalent to F, and the seventh is B, which is enharmonically equivalent, obviously, or it's the same exact pitch to B. So, these two dominant chords share the same third and seventh, even though their roles are actually flip-flopped. Um, and this is key, and there's actually some debate whether we call it the tritone substitution because you're swapping out chords a tritone away, or because these two notes are actually a tritone away. So you're actually kind of swapping things out around these two notes, which are a tritone away from each other. F to B. And what I wrote here is just 
really interesting to think about um, is that starting with this interval, we could resolve out by a half step. So F goes down to E, B goes up to C, and it becomes C major. And that's our traditional G7, 5, 1. Or these two notes could also pull in by a half step. In which case it goes to G flat and B flat, and we hear C sharp 7 going to F sharp 7. Flat keys, D flat seven, going to G flat seven. So part of the reason why this works is that these two notes are dissonant, they need resolution, but they could resolve out or they could resolve in. Pretty nifty. Um, another reason why this works is the bass motion that it tends to create. Now, I've told you that you could always do this tritone substitution, um, but here I'm talking about using the tritone substitution in the circle of fifths which is our most common Western chord progression. And here I've demonstrated using a 2-5-1 in C. So D minor 7 to G7 to C major 7. Now, if we do the tritone substitution, as you see in red, the bass line, instead of going B, D, C, which is totally fine, will now step down chromatically, which creates a really strong connection. D, I'm not singing a D, I'm singing a D, C, here's D. creates a really beautiful stepwise bass line. Number three is really interesting. These share octatonic scales. For dominant chords, we use um, half whole scales. And so for G7, I have the notes to the left. If you look at D flat seven, it's all of the same pitches, just starting on D flat, right? So D flat is here, C sharp to there. Then it goes to D, goes to D there, goes to E, goes to E there. And if you actually look through it, every single note will be the same. Um, now, you might ask why that is. And the reason is that we repeat octatonic scales every minor third. Every scale, uh, every note that's part of the same diminished seventh chord is going to have the same octatonic scale. And the tritone is actually two minor thirds. C, so it goes C to E flat is one minor third, E flat to G flat is another minor third. We get our tritone, right? From G, G to B flat is a minor third, B flat to D flat is a minor third on top of that. We get our tritone. The fourth reason here isn't necessarily a reason that it works, but it might be illuminating to those of you who come from a classical background. Um, these are kind of the equivalent of what classical musicians call augmented six chords and on the other hand, Neapolitan chords. And I'll show you what I mean. Um, I've always thought that the tritone substitution is a much cleaner explanation for why these two special chords work. Given the tritone substitution, they might not seem that special anymore. So um, here, what I've shown in on the first line, which is an arrow, is if we did kind of a five of five to a five to a one. Now, if we choose to do the tritone substitution here, we get A flat seven, leading to G. It's a classic augmented six chord. Um, and you know, all this business with German six and French six, um, it's just different alterations of that tritone substitution. I believe French six is a flat five or sharp 11. Augmented six is just a tritone substitution of a five of five. Now, a Neapolitan, I should have written this a different way, I'll switch it right now. A Neapolitan is basically just the tritone substitution of the five chord, right? Neapolitan means flat two. So instead of having just a simple two five one, if we put in the tritone sub, it's kind of the equivalent of what classical musicians, classical theorists call that Neapolitan chord. So um, if you've already accepted these chords as part of your you know, harmonic knowledge, um, then you might be kind of tickled to know that I think there's a better explanation for why these work. Which brings us to the second half of this thrilling presentation. 
I'm brought to you by Jazz Piano Fundamentals. I spent a lot of money making this book. Please buy it. Um, <laughs> only half joking. Um, how do we use the Trident Substitution? Why should we care about it? So, number one reason I didn't write down here, so let's call it the zero reason, which is that you're going to see it in charts. So it's something that you should practice, you should be prepared for. Okay, um, that instead of writing D minor to G7 to C major, you might see in some lead sheets, composers write D minor to D flat seven to C major. So you should be prepared. But there's also gonna be times when you want to use the tritone substitution, when you decide, I wanna swap out one chord for another. The number one reason that you might wanna do that is as a way to create more color in your voicing or in your improvisation. So what I've written down here, hopefully it's not too confusing, this is the D-flat mixolydian scale. I was too lazy to write down that whole world word mixolydian. And then in the red, I've said what chord tone each of these notes is against a G dominant seventh chord. So if you were reading just a G7 and you wanted to use the notes of the tritone substitution, the D-flat mixolydian, The flat five or the sharp eleven, the sharp five or the flat thirteen, the dominant seven. Then I cross out this G flat because we wouldn't use it generally if we're playing the D flat mixolydian scale. And this is the one note that does clash against that G seven chord. So for both chords, this one's an avoid note. Then you have the flat nine, the sharp nine. So, if you're improvising in a 2-5-1, of course you could think about G, you know, you could think about G altered scale, G half full octatonic, you could think about G um, Lydian augmented, G whole tone, there's all kinds of ways to get color. But one really nice way is to just shift your thinking, and instead of playing G mixolydian, play the tritone sub, play D flat mixolydian. Oftentimes, people will kind of outline the tritone sub chord. To get even more color. Some of you who are really theoretically savvy might have noticed that this scale is very close to what we often call the altered scale, or it's sometimes called the supralocrian, or it's sometimes called the diminished whole tone. I'm not gonna write that down because it's too long. But if we use a G here, then we actually get a scale that we frequently use against dominant chords. Um, it's equivalent to A flat melodic minor. Um, and that would kind of complete this scale. So by shifting our thinking, instead of thinking in all of these tones that are colorful but not altered colorful against G7. We could get all these notes that that are really colorful because they're all altered tones. And this works for voicings too. If you just want to flip your thinking and think about doing a D flat 7 instead of a G7, um, then you'll get a bunch of these altered tones, right? Um, you'll get flat nine, you'll get sharp nine, you'll get your flat five, sharp five, whatever it's gonna be. Now, you can also use this, as we discussed, to create smooth or just different bass lines. So I've given you here the first few measures of autumn leaves. Um, in black are the normal changes. <laughs> tritone substitution for each of the, um, let's see, for each of the uh, dominant chords. <laughs> I can talk, guys. I'm good. I'll show you so you can see a little better. I hate the way these camera angles. 
Sorry, I got rid of myself here. So. Okay, here I'm using C, F, B, B flat, B flat, A, D, A flat, G. And it's more common, I think, um, to do the original chord than the tritone sub, because the tritone sub's a little bit more tense. It really heightens the tension. Um, Whereas if you went from the tritone sub to the original chord, it kind of goes from more tense to less tense. So um, I think we generally want to increase the tension as we're going um, from a dominant chord to a tonic chord. Um, so that's the way that I would do it. So if I'm playing, um, here I'll play this progression here, instead of just D minor to G7 to C major, I could play D minor to G7. And it's almost like, you're adding a, I mean, you are adding a chord in there, um, but the function is just exactly the same. Those two chords, for all intents and purposes, interchangeable, right? If I'm playing body and soul, I'll let you see my hands. You know, I could just play E flat to B flat, back to E flat, or I could play. I should totally understand that by now. <laughs> do, do not rewatch this lecture up until now. And then what I did is I treated that as the five chord, normal enough. It's it's functioning as a five chord, and I added the two that would go with that five there. Right? If D flat seven is the five, then we're in the key of G flat, and the two would be A flat minor. Now that A flat minor, that's doing some other stuff. That's not really within the same scales, within the same chords, but it's related enough because it's so tightly related to the D flat seven. So now we're getting some even different colors in here. <laughs> Hear how different now that sounds? You know, we've, we've had our normal two five, our tritone. camera here. Uh, thank you so much for checking out the channel. Thank you so much for uh, watching this video. I hope you liked it. Um, my new book is Jazz Fundamentals. The cult classic of this channel is Playing Solo Jazz Piano, which I've gotten so many nice comments recently about. Um, I hope you enjoyed the video. Like, comment, subscribe, share with your friends, and uh, I'll see you soon.